here to learn as much as we possibly can about the natural history and the deep human history of this island. The team is studying all terrestrial life. We have uh, the team from the Botanic Garden studying plants, everything from mosses to trees. Uh, we have teams studying insects, spiders, reptiles, mammals, birds. We also have a team that's uh, excavating an archeological site here on the island. We're at uh, a very exciting archaeological excavation that's just starting today. We know that Polynesian people settled Norfolk a long time ago. We currently only have any evidence of that settlement from Emily Bay. So for a long time people have been looking for an interior site, another Polynesian site, so that we can add to that story and understand better what the Polynesian occupation looked like. So we have found now an ads, a Polynesian ads blank. Uh, which is very exciting because up until that point we had what, uh, what we knew was a, a workshop, a basalt flaking workshop, but we weren't entirely sure it was Polynesian and so what the ads blank gave us was confirmation that it, yes, is indeed 100% a Polynesian site. I'm Natalie, I'm a technical officer in the entomology collection at the Australian Museum. I'll be looking for beetles a lot, though this habitat here is better for flies, so I've been doing a search for flies today. Overall in Norfolk I will be doing focusing on beetles and anything else that shows up in our traps and our collection methods. A lot of work just hasn't been done here. The museum only has one drawer of specimens, of beetle specimens from Norfolk Island and not many more for the rest of the insect taxa. So just finding out what's here, what diversity is here, what isn't here, um, is really important. We're out here on a trip to collect DNA samples of the birds of Norfolk. So we've got two things in particular we're trying to do. We're trying to get some DNA samples of the native species, which is very interesting in a, for taxonomic purposes, evolutionary biology, island biogeography in particular and um, we're also very interested in catching the introduced species of which is quite a large variety here as well. They're very helpful for us both to understand uh, the spread of pests, to understand how new populations start up and it's very interesting learning about their genetic variability and keeping a, a record of the current genetic profile of the, the fauna of the island. We're luckily enough to make it out to Phillip Island and do an overnight survey there. So we were looking at both the native gecko, Christina scuntheri, and the native skink, Oligosoma lacanegrum, um, to see if they're still there, which they were, um, and to do a little bit more survey of the different populations um, and to get some new voucher samples and tissues so that we can continue on some research that's been pre-existing and look at the changes that have occurred with the um, revegetation of Phillip Island following the eradication of rabbits. There is one native mammal that we're on the lookout for. Uh, it's a really special animal. It's the only species of bat that is known uh, to have occurred here on the island. We're worried it's not still here anymore. It hasn't been definitively recorded for a very long time. What we're doing is taking ultrasonic detectors, putting them all over the island, also on Phillip Island. And what we're hoping is moving these around each night and covering all the habitats and areas of these islands. Uh, we hope to come away with an understanding of whether the bat is still here or whether it's become too late for this bat. The expedition has been a huge success across the spectrum of scientific outcomes that we were seeking to achieve and a large degree of that, is, uh, of that success has been due to the engagement of the local community and the way that they've been willing to share both their knowledge and their experience in where to go on the island and their, their experience in helping us understand the biodiversity and the archaeology of the island. Thank you.